Thank you, Dr. Podobnik. We are no first name, so thank you, Yanis. Uh, and of course, good morning, everybody, my fellow panelists. Uh, as um, it was already introduced, uh, the title of my presentation, uh, which I hope to keep it short, but uh, mind, I'm a professor. I'm used to 45 minutes. So um, please stop me. Um, is the <laughs> yeah yeah 10 to 15 minutes of course uh, is the problem of enabling cross-border infrastructure projects uh, now I will not you, give you an answer because I really don't know how to do it but uh, I will show the problems uh, and at least try to deliberate on possible uh, solutions. Now, the cross-border infrastructure projects are obviously projects crossing the uh, interstate border, the border between two sovereign states. Uh, these are usually of the type mentioned here. Uh, in transport, we are speaking of highways, or as English would put it, motorways, and uh, high-speed or high-velocity rails. In energy, this is mostly transmission, high voltage electricity transmission and high pressure gas transmission networks and specifically interconnectors. Of course, uh, there may be other types of uh, cross-border infrastructure projects. There may be uh, very limited local uh, water uh, in infrastructure projects. Uh, there may be other transportation projects. Uh, but um, uh, for uh, my presentation, I mostly limited uh, myself to these projects, which are usually, typically uh, cross-border. At least if we speak of Slovenia, they are basically all cross-border. <clears throat> these projects are complex and difficult even without a cross-border issue. Uh, we have to keep in mind that first they are, of course, expensive, and the issue of financing it is becoming ever more pressive. Uh, the next and very important issue, which we will address later, is the unequal distribution of benefits and burdens. They usually burden a very small path or area uh, through the country uh, with environmental uh, impacts, uh, with certain social disruption, uh, or at least with the fact that certain part of land needs to be uh, dedicated to the infrastructure. Uh, while, of course, they, the benefit is mostly general, the whole nation benefits from it, or at least very widely distributed. This is just a case of NIMBY effect. Uh, yeah, of course, we all agree with cross-border infrastructure project, but they should not cross my backyard. So uh, uh, this, in, in legal regulation, of course, presents uh, um, uh, certain problems, certain issues we'll address shortly later. Uh, and of course, the environmental impacts uh, by themselves are important. The longitudinal object cannot simply detour, uh, cannot simply evade uh, a protected area. Uh, and uh, of course, the issues how to solve the, uh, the taking of certain part of the uh, protected nature or, or uh, any other protected area from the protection regime and uh, use it for the infrastructure project is, uh, again, a uh, complex issue in, in the legal matter. Now, the cross-border issue raises additional problems. Um, these cross-border projects are seldom possible without some diplomatic agreement. Of course, they may be on transnational level, which we uh, will address shortly, uh, part of the transnational programs uh, and, and uh, uh, policies. But still, they, uh, even on a more detailed level, they need 
uh, direct uh, coordination between states. And of course, uh, coordination between states is done mostly through diplomacies. And of course, diplomacies are proverbially slow. Uh, everything goes in a, uh, in a uh, monthly or quarterly basis. And what is uh, another important issue I've faced on, on one of the uh, cases is that the danger that other issues between the two states may uh, get involved in the uh, diplomatic negotiations is considerable. Because diplomacies do not forget if there is an issue uh, where the other country may be more interested, of course that is the leverage that, uh, that can be put on the table. So, uh, these negotiations um, are complex, should be taken into account, and uh, they do uh, prolong and complicate and present obstacles for uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, cross-border infrastructure projects. Now, again, also a uh, different legal environment, uh, not uh, in the EU member states, but as soon as non-member states are involved, there are considerable differences in possible legal environment to take into account, while, of course, administrative cultures and practices are always different. Now, I will deal with these problems uh, more in detail on transnational, national, and local level, and then uh, in... in uh, several minutes try to, to somehow wind up. Now, transnational problems are, at least as far as Slovenia is concerned, the issue of EU versus member states and EU member states and third countries. Uh, regarding the relation between EU uh, and member states is a question of priorities. Now, the uh, EU policies, of course, are formulated involving interests of all member states, and they may sometimes not coincide well uh, with priorities on, on national levels in a particular uh, member state. Uh, regarding Slovenia, the, uh, the issue is even more pronounced due to the fact that Slovenia has these cross corridors over its territory. Well, of course, the other corridors um, may not coincide with it. For instance, uh, there is the case of road corridor E59 uh, of Trans-European uh, uh, road network, which simply crosses Slovenia on, a, that's the Piran highway uh, prolonged. And um, that one, of course, is in a corridor which is a rather low priority for Slovenia. And the fact is that a part of it is still not built and is slowly, slowly going on. Uh, the next question is EU law. Now, EU law may foster this project, may sponsor them. But again, if they are not compatible with EU policies, it may create obstacles. Uh, I was faced with the problems of infrastructure fees, road tolls, uh, the fees of transmission networks. They are regulated by EU law very uh, specifically in, in, in great detail. And um, uh, they may um, create uh, economic conditions which are not very favorable for infrastructure projects because, of course, this EU regulation tries to keep infrastructure fees as low as possible. And uh, this, of course, does not, um, does not um, uh, benefit the, the cross-border um, infrastructure project. Again, state aid limitations. This infrastructure project, of course, always involved an activity of state and there may be a problem of the price of land. Usually the corridors may be even owned by the country or by the municipalities, and the, um, the um, price of it may, uh, may present, or being, uh, uh, being for free, may present a state aid situation. Because Mostly the um, investors and the operators then are on market in all 
uh, these uh, infrastructure areas. <coughs> Uh, but the most important issue, I believe, is the national implementation of cross-border projects. Uh, the <clears throat> diplomatic level, okay, it's slow, but still it comes to uh, an agreement. And at least to my knowledge, the interministerial co cooperation or intergovernment co cooperation uh, between uh, administrations on, on national level in performing the project is usually quite good or at least um, is uh, not visible as an obstacle. There are working groups, coordinations, etc. But the problem is the third uh, point, because uh, of course ministries and working groups do not really implement the project. The project is implemented by administrative units that usually do their job. The job of um, preparing uh, and adopting uh, uh, different uh, plans uh, of uh, adopting uh, uh, different uh, administrative acts, uh, permits, approvals, and of course um, expropriation. Expropriation is uh, always involved as a considerable problem in these projects. Uh, this is left to administrations which usually do this for municipalities, for different investors, and uh, the jurisdictions are overlapping uh, parts is under the central uh, administrative agencies, part in local, part municipal. Uh, and um, this, of course, I believe is the major and most important uh, issue. Particularly in Slovenia so, because the uh, legal uh, structure and uh, arrangement of these issues, spatial planning, environmental protection, construction, expropriation, is very complex uh, um, and coupled with, of course, the administrative procedures, and in particular, court review of administrative procedures may uh, lead to long delays. Again, the municipal level, the local level, uh, Regarding municipalities, of course, the issue of NIMBY effect is by far the strongest. The infrastructure project crosses the uh, municipality without the municipality usually having any, really any benefit at all. Motorway or highway crosses it, but the exit, the closest exit is one or two municipalities away. You must be aware that in Slovenia, municipalities are very small. Uh, at least in part, well, the, the average, I believe, is um, around uh, 2,000 inhabitants, but bearing in mind that there are a few large cities, the rest is 1,000 and less. Uh, so this infrastructure project simply cross them, and usually they have no connection to it, so no benefit from it. Uh, the fact that uh, there may be foreign investors involved is even more uh, of a burden, more of a problem, because uh, the municipal um, um, factors, the mayor, the council, may see it as an uh, additional foreign uh, influence. They have nothing to do. This coupled with the fact that municipalities have, uh, in spatial planning, uh, a quite important role. Uh, can lead to many ways they can hamper the project. Uh, so bear in mind, municipalities have to be taken into account. And of course, environmental impact assessment in relation to non-governmental organizations. Many project, projects have failed uh, because courts recognize the standing of non-governmental organizations uh, in environmental issues and uh, if they are not taken into account, it uh, causes um, going to the court and back and court and back. And um, there have been, a, I have read um, a project on construction of wind uh, uh, power plants stopped because at the end, when it was already half built, uh, the court overturned the decision. Uh, to fi finish on some ideas of enabling, I, I do not have any real final answers. 
But the first issue, I believe, is that municipalities should not be disregarded in even in the first stages of defining the cross-border infrastructure projects. They have to see that there's some benefit for them. Of course, it may be uh, that uh, they will be dissatisfied at the end, even in that case. But if then involved in early stages of preparation, uh, the project, uh, the danger of this is much smaller. Uh, I've been involved in a case of uh, downstream um, uh, Sava River power plants, and there the uh, municipalities have been involved from the beginning. Well, the negotiations were difficult, but then the project went on smoothly. Uh, again, the transnational issues, particularly EU law issues, have to be addressed at the beginning, not to find later that EU law may uh, simply uh, make the project unviable. Uh, What's most important is the national legal, uh, legal regulation. It's complex, and I, I'm afraid that any legislator, any new government and new legislation which tries to, hamp, uh, to tinker with it um, actually makes it worse, because it's so complex, so intertwined, that uh, if you change it here, of course, several issues change over there, and uh, it's very difficult to, to make it more, uh, uh, more operative and less uh, burdened with different catches. Of course, this can be done by a special dedicated law. There are many limitations. There are international um, agreement limitations on, on environmental protection. There are EU limitations. Uh, and, of course, there are constitutional limitations regarding uh, Slovenia constitution. But, again, there is a good, and I, as a lawyer, am not uh, really uh, very enthusiastic about special legislation. But on the other hand, there is a, a good case. Again, downstream uh, Sava River chain, uh, there was a special law, and it enabled certain issues to be solved much, uh, much easier. And of course, uh, everybody that uh, ventures on a uh, cross-border infrastructure project should take into account that it will be at least twice that lengthy as inland uh, or in-country infrastructure project. There may be different setbacks. There should be scenarios for these setbacks. And, um, and uh, this, again, is a problem of different administrative cultures, maybe uh, in certain countries. Uh, investors expect it to be much faster, much easier, but this needs to be taken into account. Thank you for listening to me. I hope that at least uh, it was worth uh, the 15 or 20 minutes of your time. Thank you.